Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in this video, I thought I would answer a lot of the common questions that I've been getting over the last couple weeks. It seems like when the season begins or the season ends, I just get a lot of questions revolving figs that are really common questions. So uh, to alleviate a lot of those questions, I figured I'd just do a short and sweet video for you guys. Before I get into that, I just want to touch on some things that have been happening in the world, like the coronavirus. There's just a lot of... Um, you know, information out there that's just not very credible. It's really a wild thing that happened to us guys. A lot of fear out there. And um, you know, here on this YouTube channel, I try to be as informative and as accurate as possible. Obviously, I'm gonna make mistakes. Some things are not gonna come across the way I want them to. Um, but you know what, there's no one really on YouTube uh, in terms of figs, putting out as much original ideas as myself. You know, this isn't regurgitated information that I've taken from somewhere else and just laid it out for you guys and edited it out real nice and uh, made it look nice and had some clickbait in there and made it seem like, oh, I really know what I'm talking about. Um, this is stuff that I, I, I do. This is everything that I show you guys, I follow to the T for the most part. Um, Sometimes I try different experiments and different things like that that are maybe a bit out there, but uh, you know, for the most part, I think how this all relates to the news and how it relates to the coronavirus is that if you guys are looking for you know, someone to really rely on for information, find the person who's super passionate about this, that's been doing this for a long time, that's put a lot of study and time and hours into this, put the hard work in. That's the person that you want to rely on in such a crazy time like this. Not the news, you know, um, not all this craziness that's going on and there's even politics being put into this. Um, it's just, it's just insane. So what I just, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to say is that, you know, I'm seeing it a lot with obviously what's going on right now in the world, but you know, it really does relate to everything in our lives of where we get our information because there's, in today's day and age, there's so much information out there. You just have to know where to look um, and ignore all the clickbait, ignore all the crazy headlines, um, you know, all the fancy stuff that makes it, you know, just drives us insane and gets us emotional. So uh, let's get on to these questions now, guys. If you're already watching, by the way, I'm sure you understand what I just said because you're here at the right place when it comes to figs, that's for sure. So. Um, we have ourselves two different trees here. We have one that's dormant. And the common question I normally get here is what do I do with my dormant trees or what do I do with my actively growing trees? You can tell they're actively growing because the buds are swelling and there's leaves on it. Or even just the buds are swelling. Um, you can actually even make a cut in the wood and see if it starts to bleed. And that will give you another indicator if your tree is, uh, is also awake. If your tree's awake and it has some of these buds on it, you don't want them to get hit with a frost, okay? It's really that simple. You don't want them to get hit with a frost. You don't want them to get really below 32 degrees ever. Um, now, a lot of you, because of your improper storage conditions, um, you have trees right now that are awake. And it's also been pretty mild too, so I'll cut you guys some slack. But uh, it's been extremely mild here and as a result, a lot of everybody's trees are waking up prematurely before your average last frost. So what I would recommend, this is an absolute must. If you don't do this, uh, you know, you're going to regret it, is that you have leaves on your tree like this or you have you know, buds that are just popping. You need to get them into the sunlight. Um, it, they have to get that natural sunlight. If you keep them in your shed, you keep them in your garage, you keep them in your crawl space, your basement, where there's no light, um, it's not gonna work out for you. Your season's really gonna be uh, a big mess because what's gonna end up happening is that I already have growth that's pretty thick and it's putting out these leaves on it and it's not pale. You'll see if you keep them in your basement or your garage, the, the growth that's new, which is where our fruits will form. If we screw up this new growth here, our fruits are not gonna form correctly. We're probably not gonna get that many fruits at all. So you need to really take care of this new stuff here, this new growth. And that means putting it out into the sunlight. Now, if you have some leaves on here already, 
and they've been growing in the basement or something with no light, you need to do that very slowly. You don't want to just throw them into full sun. They need to adjust to full sun. Um, kind of like us, if we're really pale and we go out on the beach one day, we get burnt. It's the same thing with this. Uh, we need to really slowly adjust them hour by hour up to that full sun amount. Um, so that's, that's a big key right there. Other people have still have dormant trees, like myself. Everything underneath the sunroom is dormant and uh, will probably remain dormant for another month or so. And what's going to end up happening is that I'm going to try to prematurely wake them up as well before my average last frost um, because I want them to wake up 15 days before my average last frost. That's a good estimation for everybody is that our trees should, should sort, of, sort of look like this or close to this 15 days before your average last frost. That's going to make your season extension or the length of your season at a maximum. And that's really key with figs, guys. They're a long season fruit. So um, that's what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of just letting them sit there in dormancy, keeping them cool, you know, temperatures under 50. Uh, these dormant trees, however, I could, if I really wanted to, um, I could bring them out from underneath the sunroom, out from underneath storage, and I could just leave them here on the patio until, uh, until really until our last frost. Uh, I could really put them out now permanently um, until the fall. And the reason for that is because this tree is dormant. If we were to get a 20 degree low as an example, this tree would be able to withstand that. 20 degrees is quite cold, but because it's dormant, because it's lignified well, um, this tree will be all right. Now, that's not necessarily going to happen, but if it does, for whatever reason, right, we're already in March, midway through March, it's possible that we see 20 degrees here. I've already uncovered all the fig trees in the ground. Um, you guys should do your unwrapping at this point. Unveil all these trees because you want that soil to warm up. This is really key. So by having it here on the patio, we're warming up the soil and also it's going to have that rain. The rain is going to rehydrate the soil that combined with the warmer soil temperatures, we're going to have trees that are waking up about 15 days before your average last frost, which is exactly what you want. Now the issue here becomes is that if they're waking up 15 days before your average last frost, well, you still have a 15 day window of potential frost, right? So, you know, you got to play around with that and maybe you can move them into safety if there is a potential for frost. Make sure you're, you're staying on top of the weather. Check your frost warnings. You know, a tree like this, I would not keep, keep this outside full time because for sure it's gonna dip below 32 degrees before this tree, uh, before our last frost, you know. Um, so this is probably not gonna work. We still have 45 days left. This could work. And I think I do recommend this to a lot of you guys. You wanna get a jump head start on the season Put this outside and uh, you'll just have to get it through those days of frost. And um, the easy way to do that is just to cover them with some plastic. Maybe you have some blankets, maybe you have some sheets. You know, there's a lot of different methods that you guys can use to cover these um, to make sure that they're basically gonna be avoiding those really cold days and they'll be okay. Even with leaves on them, you cover them, on a, you know, a light frost, just cover the leaves with plastic or a blanket and that way the frost isn't hitting this tree and it'll be okay and you guys will be fine. So that's, you know, a big one right there, you know, between the dormant trees, the, uh, the non-dormant trees. The next thing here is the fertilizer a lot of you guys are starting to ask me about and um, we'll do a whole thing on our fertilizer and, you know, I guess the, the exact thing that I'm doing. But realistically, all you have to do is get this stuff on now. As soon as the tree starts to grow, it's no longer dormant. You guys want to be feeding your trees, preferably with something that's quick. Uh, there is organic fertilizer, the Alaska Fish Fertilizer, that has a good amount of nitrogen in it. Um, that stuff's very fast acting. You want that fast acting stuff because we want our nutrients into the soil right now. Uh, the trees have woken up. This new growth is really, really important between taking off our brabas that we've been talking about, thinning out the new growth, 
and then feeding the trees, it's all about getting this growth as strong and healthy and as vigorous as possible to get as many fruits as possible. So by feeding them now, the very first day of the season, it's really, really key. I don't recommend feeding for a very long time. I know people that do that for a very long time, up until August. Um, I did four feedings last year uh, throughout the month of May. Um, so one once per week, four times, and ending in uh, like June 1st. And that was enough fertilizer um, with this stuff right here, this inorganic Jax uh, soluble fertilizer. This is a 94515. I don't really care what fertilizer you guys use. That's a big question I get a lot by newer people. I don't think the newer guys, unfortunately, understand fertilizer really all that much. Um, you know, you can make an argument that one fertilizer is better than the other, but realistically, you just want something with some nitrogen in it. Um, some potassium definitely helps and uh, phosphorus definitely helps. I would probably rank them in order of nitrogen first and then potassium second, phosphorus third. Uh, you want all three. You don't want to go crazy with the fertilizer, especially with the nitrogen. Too much nitrogen leads to cracking in our fruits. So if you feed for too long and too much, it's also not good uh, because you'll have lower fruit quality later in the season with too much cracking. And uh, that's actually really not a good thing for a lot of us, even though it, it, it's very pretty. So my recommendation, get the fertilizer on now. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's quick. Um, and then also, you know, don't go crazy with it. You know, I'm gonna do probably this year, I did four feedings last year, I'll probably do six this year and see what the difference is between four and six. Um, I wouldn't do eight. Um, I'd probably do, I'd probably stop this whole process for a lot of us sometime in June. Um, if you wait till July or August, you're just feeding too much. So that's kind of it guys. Um, I think those are the really common things that are kind of bugging everybody. This is also the time to be doing um, training and pruning, especially root pruning. Um, you can start snipping off these trees, but don't prune them unless they're dormant. I wouldn't do that. You know, that's also then going to affect the growth here, uh, becoming as vigorous and healthy, as strong as we want it. So prune them while they're dormant. Otherwise I would wait. Um, look up our videos on training them. If they're young, I have videos on trees that are two and three years old, also mature trees. Um, and then I also have videos on pruning. And then lastly, if you are confused at where you are in the season, what you should be doing at this time of the year, uh, I have a, a post on my blog, figboss.com, and it lists out the fig tree timeline there. There is a blog post that will date every little thing, every step of the way uh, that you can go through in your season to make sure that you guys are doing the right things at the right time. Thank you guys here for watching this one and sticking with me here on the channel. There's a lot more to come. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care and stay healthy out there. Stay out of trouble, guys.